And here on the main stage, we are going to have a very sp special moment talking about software is eating the world and AI is changing the menu with Cesar Gon and Matt Savas. So I will leave the stage for you two to continue this discussion. Thanks, thanks, Chris. And um, excited about this topic here. It's uh, one that I think is on everybody's mind these days. And we have uh, somebody who is expert in the subject, Cesar Gon. He is the CEO of CINT and is a pioneering entrepreneur and tech innovator who began coding at 11 and started his first digital venture at the age of 13. He founded CINT at, 13, at 23, not 13, 23, uh, transforming it into a global leader in digital services. Uh, his unique approach combines lean management with agile and scrum. You can learn about that in his book, Faster, Faster, The Dawn of Lean Digital. Under his leadership, CINT has seen 26 years of growth, expanding to over 5,000 professionals worldwide and becoming uh, the first Brazilian company listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 2021. Uh, I will turn it over to Cesar. Actually, it looks like, uh, it sounds like, okay, I think that audio issue has been cleared up. Uh, Cesar, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Matt. Good day, everyone. 10.30 p.m. here in London. It's a great pleasure to be here. I've prepared this presentation based on an article I wrote for the MIT Slow Magazine Review, titled Software is Eating the World and AI is Changing the Menu, along with some additional content and reflection. And inspired by, by the debate about the future of humans and machines, I've created a unique set of AI visuals. So each idea presented will be illustrated with an AI-generated digital artwork inspired by a painting masterpiece and created through a brainstorming with myself, ChatGPT, and my buddy, MidJourney. I'm really excited about the results and I'm eager to hear your opinion. By the way, I've included an appendix in this presentation with the images of the historical paintings, descriptions, and the exact prompts I use to create the AI visuals. So as Matt mentioned, I have a long emotional and I would say childlike connection with computers. My journey as a coder started in 1982 when I was 11. And at the age of 13, I made my first deal with software, selling a chess game that I had coded to a tech magazine. At the same age, I also became a young sci-fi reader. Isaac Asimov's book showed me a world where robots and people work together to solve big cosmic problems and advance civilization. And that inspired me to pursue a career as a computer scientist and later on to start my own tech company, now a public global company. Over the past three decades, I've been immersed in tech trends as an integral part of my life. And I'm sure everyone in the field knew that AI would be the next frontier, the next big thing, but no one really knew when and how. Fast forward to last November, and like everyone else, I was impressed with the capabilities of OpenAI's GPT 3.5 model. It was much, much better than all the early GPT versions and all the other large language models available in the market and inside academic gates. It definitely marked the beginning of a new chapter in the tech industry. As a tech entrepreneur, it's an exciting time as I join my colleagues to turn the vision of CINT powered by AI into reality. However, this is not the subject of my presentation today. Instead, I will take the risk of opening a broader discussion. I select Salvador Dali's The Persistence of Memory for this opening because it represents in a surreal way the, a distortion of reality. And I believe the current debate about AI is suffering from a clear distortion of reality. My moment of enlightenment with Gen AI occurred in the very beginning of this year on a Saturday night. It was my starry night. Intrigued by GPT's coding ability, I decided to code alongside with my new AI buddy. I can't resist a little coding from time to time, but my last serious coding experience was 20 years ago. So I'm a rusty programmer at most. Even so, we coded for six ininterrupted hours. 
just like in the good old days. And it was a delightful experience. My imagination journeyed from my first ter- touch in a Commodore 64 keyboard plugged into an old TV 40 years ago to the sci-fi experience of coding with an AI co-pilot pre-trained with 175 billion parameters. Indeed, an AI baby when compared to the 1 trillion parameters of GPT-4. When I went to sleep, I realized that two things were gone, my bottle of wine and my skepticism about the readiness of generative AI. I woke up the next day even more determined to be part of an unprecedented productive disruption in science and engineering. So let's deep dive into it. No, AI is not just a hype. It's a transformative technology with real world applications and rapid advancements. However, there is hype surrounding AI, leading to inflated expectations and misconceptions. It's an empirical fact. We always overestimate the change that will occur in the next two years and underestimate, radically underestimate the change that will occur in the next 10. So the trap here is inaction. Gardner knows that. I guess everyone here is familiar with the Gardner's famous technology hype cycle, right? Indeed, generative AI has been traversing the hype cycle for quite some time, reaching now the peak of inflated expectations. What is ahead? What is ahead is disillusionment, followed by enlightenment, and then achieving widespread adoption of the plateau of productivity. In my humble opinion, these next stages of the cycle will transpire very quickly. So I think 2024 will be the year of disillusionment for AI, but don't fall in the trap of inaction. Finally, this visual was inspired by Botticelli's masterpiece, The Birth of Venus. The goddess Venus symbolized the cycle of life, resembling the idea behind Gartner's hype cycle. In the short term, as expected, we are indeed seeing considerable controversy surrounding AI. This includes issues concerning privacy, copyright, misinformation, intellectual property, the lack of transparency in model, model training, algorithmic bias, and questions regarding the effectiveness of ethical guardrails. The debate is not new, but got on fire after Gen AI became instantly accessible to millions of end users, initially through ChatGPT, and now with dozens of AI applications launching every single week. And there are three obvious consequences when AI is placed in the hands of millions of consumers. First, awareness and usage increase exponentially. Open up use cases that its inventors could never have a dream of. Second, commercial interests take the lead with tech companies, startups, and incumbents all seeking ways to explore the technology for financial advantage. And third, the technology, technology's limitations are exposed, sparking a vital debate about the risks and biases, regulation and oversight, which can be either helpful or burdensome, quickly follow. So we are living in the Tower of Babel moment in this debate, illustrated by my digital artwork based on the masterpiece of Peter Bruegel. Mark Anderson's seminal article, Software is Eating the World, was published in the Wall Street Journal in 2011. In the article, Anderson argued that software was becoming increasingly central to every industry and aspect of modern life. Software was driving major changes and disrupting traditional business models, transforming the world in new and unexpected ways. And I decided to illustrate the idea of the software revolution in all industry, industries with the amazing masterpiece, The Great Wave of Kanagawa, the famous Japanese art of about 200 years ago. The parallel here is between the dramatic and dynamic of nature's power and the dramatic and dynamic power of software. In this context, one of the most frequent questions I've received from CEOs and business leaders over the past decade was something like, Caesar, with the current pace of demand for software development, will a large portion of humanity need to learn how to code? My standard, almost academic 
response has been something like no, a new layer of abstraction is on the horizon. It's hard to anticipate when and how, but it, it will arrive. My furtive answer was a logical deduction based on the historical evolution of software development. We start in 1946 with the manual connections of wire and switches in the ENIAC, the first general purpose digital computer, followed by the era of the punched cards. Yeah, hold on, dinosaurs. After that, we have the incredible introduction of the keyboard and the assembly language, and finally, the allure of modern programming language. Each of these successful, successive layers of abstraction has led to significant productivity gains of 10 to 100 times compared to the previous one. Now I need to talk about this artwork inspired by Tarsila do Amaral and his masterpiece, Abapuru. She was an amazing artist and a central figure in one of the most important art movements in Brazil in 1920s, in the 1920s, named Movimento Antropofágico. In English would be Anthropophagic Movement or Cannibal Movement. The parallel here was to illustrate the insane app title for software developers with the giant cannibal Abapuru. And I love the result. And finally, the groundwork for a new layer has been laid. AI is already revolutionizing software development by fostering a much needed new, new level of abstraction. So we will get our 10 to 100 times boost again. Time frame, my guess is 10, 10 times in 10 years and 100 times in 20 years. And yes, it may reduce a little, just a little, the exponential Abapurus Pantagruelic app title for developers. However, hold your horses. Each new layer brings much more than just a radical boost in productivity. It also enhances our problem solving capabilities. So this is the real equation with software and technology. Every time we have a leap in efficiency, we also increase the demand side of the equation, amplifying our ambitions to address a new class of problems that was not addressable with the previous level of abstraction. I'm using this reference to Claude Monet's classic water lilies as a symbol of the transition from the realism to the impressionism in the late 19th century, which marked the introduction of a new layer of abstraction in how we perceive and experience, and experience visual arts. Well, we can also say that with AI soft engineering will become more blurry or fuzzy. Although not everyone will need to code, it's highly likely that AI will impact every knowledge-based profession, just as it happened with each tech revolution in the past, from the industrial age to the personal computing to the internet. My bold line here is in a few decades, the disparity between current jobs and future jobs will be as vast as comparing medieval occupations to contemporary ways of work. Software will continue to eat the world and the addition of the AI layer will dramatically change the menu of possible problems we can tackle and the way we work. At least this was the idea I was trying to illustrate with this image inspired by Pablo Picasso's Le Demoiselle de Vignon. As a general purpose technology, AI will augment our human ability to sense, process, learn, share, and act. More people than ever will have access to affordable tools that amplify their power and creativity and impact their lives. Now let's consider the potential to use advanced AI to solve seemingly impossible problems such as human biology, cancer, dementia, longevity, fusion energy, or anticipating natural disasters. I have another bold line here. In the following years, the concrete stories will be less like defeating the number one chess grandmaster like Deep Blue versus Kasparov in 1997, and more like solving one of the biologist's biggest challenges, the protein folding problem, as demonstrated by DeepMind's AlphaFold in 2020, based on another flavor of AI called supervised learning. Finally, we can also envision a true democratization of knowledge and education. Imagine unprivileged children ac across the world, in Africa, Brazil, in rural areas of India or China, 
accessing chatbot tutors through their low-cost phones, receiving personalized quality education. I know this sounds like utopia, but for the first time in history, we will have the technology to implement this on large scale and at a low cost. And to illustrate my utopia, I created an artwork based on the masterpiece by George Seha from the end of the 19th century. Changing gears now, let's turn our attention to the brave new world of possibilities for business, for, for the corporate world. I like to explain my vision by defending AI as the milestone that ends the first chapter of the digital revolution and the gateway to a completely new chapter of disruption, one I call hybrid digital. Over the next decades, so not, not only on the, on the next two years, but in a time frame of 10 years, I believe hyper digital will unfold in three acts. Act one is hyper productivity, efficiency, paving the way for act two, that's hyper personalization or customer experience. And this progression then leads to act three, probably by the end of the next decade. The advent of disruptive new business model enabled by the exponential reduction in the cost of complex decision-making. And another question I receive, I'm receive, i receiving a lot lately is what changes, what, what challenges do you believe big companies will face when trying to adapt to this new competitive scenario? Well, based on my experience, help large companies to embrace change driven by tech. I believe the speed of change is an equation of the speed of learning. This happens at the personal and corporate levels. Now, what is there to learn? To answer that question, it's important to recognize that the best spaces for corporate innovation occur in the intersection of new technology possibilities and new consumer behaviors. These two forces are, of change are interlinked. What we, exp what we are experiencing now with AI is both a new set of tech avenues combining with the rapid adoption by millions of consumers. So to increase the speed of change, companies need to accelerate their learning in both areas, understanding the capabilities of AI and the technology itself, as well as comprehending the new frontiers of consumer behavior in a world powered by AI. And this is the moment I normally add that if you need help with this, those challenges, you can count on CI and T. So the big challenge is the speed of learning. And that's why I created this artwork inspired by Raphael's masterpiece, The School of Athens, a celebration of the spirit of the Renaissance. What we are seeing as a result of the huge commercial potential of AI is the emergence of a bloody industry battle among the tech giants to dominate the AI space and its foundations. Take a look at this digital artwork inspired by the classic colleges, dogs playing poker, painting from 181894. Now try to identify Elon Musk, Zuckerberg, Pichai, not just not, Satya Nadella, Tim Cook and Jeff Bezos in this picture. I'll give you a second. Okay, later on, you can check my prompt to get the exact answer, but I'm quite sure you already get Musk. One interest point to highlight is that the first high-impact application of a large language model was not released by one of the industry tech giants. Against the odds, OpenAI, or originally a non-profit startup, achieved this feat. Now things have changed a lot. What was celebrated as a triumph of open innovation turned into a competition among secret R&D labs of the big dogs and OpenAI turning into a for-profit and another black box company married to Microsoft. By the way, a great bet by Satya Nadella. To complete the scene, an avalanche of VC money is cascading into countless new AI ventures, creating a solid flywheel of innovation around AI. So welcome to another self-fulfilling prophecy of the tech industry. This visual was inspired by Manes, the Railway masterpiece. Here, the idea is to illustrate the, the technological progress and urbanization that changed the landscape of the 19th century. Throughout history, various tech, tech revolutions have reshaped 
society and spark ethical discussions. We can recall a long list of early transformations like printing press, the steam engine, railroads, electricity, the internal combust engine, cars, telephone, radio, TV, semiconductors, computers, biotechnology, the internet and smartphones. Each of these general purpose technologies revolutionized different aspects of human life while also raising concerns of safety, privacy, environmental impact and societal change. And here we are, the tectonic plates are moving again and we are seeing the apoteotic release of the cracking of generative AI. However, there is a lot more on the verge. In the following years, we will see the combination of all shades of AI under the umbrellas of machine learning and symbolic AI with advances in Web3, IoT, virtual reality, computer vision, and robotics. All these will be turbocharged by advancements in infrastructure, communications, computing capacity, and computing models like edge computing now and quantum computing later, probably 10, 20 years. Fasten your seat belts. Still, there are Two, two critical differences between AI and the previous revolutions. Why you look at this image inspired by Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam? Just think that in the just in the last 10 years, humanity has increased the computing resource on Earth by a factor of 100 million. So, firstly, they speed. They speed at which innovations have disrupted society has increased dramatically. Now with AI, we face the challenge of, unpre of an unprecedented exponential pace of change. Secondly, another critical difference is that is the, is the general nature of AI. While early innovations often focused on specific domains or applications such as transportation or communication, AI has the potential to impact virtually every industry and aspect of human life, from healthcare and education to finance and entertainment. Pablo Picasso's Guernica is considered by many as the most moving and powerful anti-war painting in history. Let's use this as a backdrop to the ethical discussions around AI. First, from my humble perspective, the debate over the ex existential risk of AI is a fantasy that is distracting us from today's real concerns. Let me be clear, I don't believe we are going to see sci-fi like artificial general intelligence or artificial super intelligence in our lifetime. It's a surreal distortion of reality. However, the rapid development of AI raises concrete ethical concerns ranging from job displacement and algorithm algorithmic bias to potential measles in safety hazards, acts of terrorism and government surveillance. Now let's face the brutal truth. Truth, AI disruptions is unstoppable in modern democratic and capitalist societies because of consumer demand, economic incentives, and global competition. Moreover, with the geopolitical complexes of today, attempting to halt the AI evolution should be seen as a naive move. Throughout history, we have repeatedly regulated disruptive technologies. Now that we are a tech-based society, we must adapt and accelerate the pace of regulation to effectively establish guardrails that balance innovation and public interests. Fortunately, we are seeing the cards, the cards being played in this space, and I can mention two initiatives. The first Global Artificial Intelligence Safety Summit, hosted by the UK government a few weeks ago in the emblematic Bletchley Park, the birthplace of computer science, and also the announcement of the AI Safety Institute by the US government. AI is unstoppable, yet it must and can be wisely regulated. As you now have probably already noticed, I am a tech optimist. When asked if I fear a world with advanced AI, I respond that I'm more concerned about a world without it. Advanced AI will be crucial, maybe the only viable path for tackling major global issues like education, healthcare, equity, and climate change. However, it's also crucial to remember Asimov's words and strive to balance 
our pursuit of knowledge, scientific knowledge with the wisdom necessary to guide our actions. And of course, I shall end my presentation with the genius, Leonardo da Vinci, who 500 years ago showed how far the human spirit can go. This digital artwork inspired by Mona Lisa and Asimov's iconic robot series aimed to illustrate a world where artificial intelligence and humans coexist, working together to tackle complex problems and advance civilizations. That's it. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Cesar, for uh, you gave us a lot to think about there. I appreciate your optimism, too. Um, not enough of that in this AI discussion. We do have a few uh, minutes here for Q&A. So if you have questions for Cesar, be sure to throw them in the Q&A. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start off here. Um, there's a lot of directions that we could go. But this is this is a conference about mean and therefore management. And I was struck uh, when you talked about the potential of democratizing education. You can give a custom tutor to every child on the planet that meets the person exactly where they're at. It made me think, why couldn't you do that with managers? Why, what will be the purpose of management um, when these tools are able to probably help people problem solve, develop, maybe better than people are today. And frankly, I'll say I'm embarrassed to say that I often seek advice from ChatGPT when I confront management problems. So, I mean, what, what do you perceive as the future of management and leadership with the advent of these powerful technologies? Matt, I think it's, it's, it's everything very new, but I think it's clear that we can consider that AI will amplify management and leadership in very unexpected ways. I think it's not only scaling management, the famous overhead we call management, mm -hmm. but also probably reshape the way we 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 organize uh, uh, companies, the way we organize our leadership model, the way we organize our management system, if we, we want to connect this with Lean. So I think there is a lot of... Uh, uh, field for research and, and and experiment and exploration around how to combine AI with organization modeling, with lean management, with lean thinking and so on. So I, I, I think it's inevitable that we will have to really redesign uh, the way we operate as, as leaders and, and managers in the corporate world. But it's very hard to anticipate now is with yeah. the, because we are in the beginning of this journey, right? So it's much more education, educated guess than... than well, than given the uncertainty learns. around everything, how would you advise uh, a leader, an executive? Um, do you just let this technology loose and give freedom to every employee to start using ChatGPT? Do you give access to the company's data and allow it to learn? Uh, what, what would you approach B or advice B to a leader facing this problem? I think uh, I think the, the whole idea of lean leadership is to encourage a culture of continuous learning, right? And improvement mm -hmm. and, and empowering teams and our, our, our levels to identify ways to eliminate uh, they try value, eliminate waste and so on. So I think integrating AI at first our first hypothesis can be how do we really flourish this idea of empowering teams, how we guarantee maybe over-reliance on data-driven decision-making by the team, or, or how we challenge a team to, to try to be more creative and effective. So uh, I think there's a lot of things to navigate, but uh, 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 I think AI can can be an a, 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 an amazing tool for really amplify or augment lean leadership. Can can you hear me? Yes, we can. But unfortunately, the time is up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Cesar. So I will have to That's stop great. you too. Thank you, Cesar. Thank you, Matt. Great, My pleasure. great talk. Thank you. Great to see you. Congratulations. <laughs>